game development is hard and one of the hardest obstacles that i have come across in my journey of game development is collision detection recently i was developing a clone of the asteroids game it was all well and good until i started to search for an algorithm for collision detection a few that i found were the bounding box collision detection the separating axis theorem for polygons and the pixel perfect collision detection now the game i was making was not an exact replica of the old arcade asteroids game it was faster and so i needed a more accurate algorithm than bounding box collision detection as asteroids are not really box shaped on the other hand the pixel perfect collision is just too heavy to calculate and doesn't make sense for so many asteroids in the game so i decided to go with the middle of the crop here the separating axis collision detection can detect collision between polygons these polygons can have as many sides as we want allowing us to create more detailed colliders while still being somewhat easy on the hardware so let us look at how sad collision detection works and how we can implement it in our games firstly it is important to know that sat algorithm only works for convex polygons in general terms convex polygons are ones that look like a circle mathematically convex polygons can be described as polygons in which all the internal angles are below 180 degrees but if we want to detect collisions for concave polygons we can just break them down into convex polygons since triangles are always convex we can just break down any complex polygon into triangles and run the sat algorithm for each of those triangles but this is not required if the polygon we have at hand is already a convex one so the separating axis theorem is a simple one to understand it states that if we can draw a line between two polygons that separates them then we can conclude that the two polygons are not touching or colliding take for example these two boxes we can just draw a line from the middle of them and so we can say that they don't collide what if the boxes are positioned like this then we can draw this line and we can see that the line separates them so they don't collide if we can't draw a single such line it means that they are colliding for most polygons we can draw multiple such lines that separate them but we only need to find one to say conclusively that they don't touch so how do we draw this line here we have to use a concept called vector projection projecting a vector onto another is like drawing a reflection image that the vector will make onto the other vector if you don't know what any of this means you can watch the video series by 3 blue one brown on the essence of linear algebra so let's take two squares and an arbitrary vector a projecting a polygon onto this vector is just taking the points of the polygon and finding their projection onto this vector this can be done easily by using vector dot product suppose the coordinates of a point in 2d space are x1 y1 we can represent it as a vector pointing to this point with its tail on the origin to find its projection onto a vector ai plus bj we can find the dot product of these two vectors which will give us a scalar that represents the length on the vector at which this point will be projected if we do this for all the points in a polygon we basically get the projection of that polygon let's do this for both of our squares here in this projection all we are interested in are the mean and the max points of each polygon if the max point of the first polygon lies before the mean point of the second polygon it means that there is a gap between them along this axis if they overlap it means that there is no gap now just because there is no gap between the polygons on one projection axis does not mean that there is no gap at all for example here although the projection points overlap we can see that on some other axis there is indeed a gap so how many such axis do we need to check there are potentially infinite axis even in 2d space but we don't need to check all of them the only ones we need to check are the normals of the sides of the polygons we can ignore the rest of them now why it is so i am not entirely sure either so let's go ahead with just assuming that it is true so we calculate the normals for each side of the polygons and project the two polygons onto these normals then we check if the projections are overlapping by checking the max points and min points of the polygons if along the way we find a single projection that does not overlap we can conclude that we can draw a separating axis and therefore there is no collision so now that we understand the theory of sat let us try to implement it in a program and test if it works i'll be using c++ and sfml for this demo but you can follow along in your environment of choice let's start by creating two polygons i created this function that creates a regular polygon for us with a given number of sides and radius 
let's color the left one red and the right one blue so we can distinguish them i have also added some code that allows us to move the left one around and rotate it now currently the vertices of our polygons are stored in the local coordinate system that is they are relative to the object's origin but for this algorithm to work we need to convert them into world units that is make them relative to the world's origin so that points of both the polygons are represented in the same frame of reference we can do this by applying rotation and translation of the object to each point we can use this function to do that for us after that we need to calculate the normals of each side of both the polygons i was trying to find the normal to a sample vector and after spending hours at it and starting to really doubt my ability to do simple math i finally figured it out and along the way i found a simple trick that makes this operation much easier basically given any vector ei plus bj to find its normal vector we just swap the coefficients a and b and negate either one of them if we negate b we get the normal pointing plus 90 degrees and if we negate a we get the normal pointing to minus 90 degrees of the current vector using this new found knowledge of the universe i created these functions to calculate the normals to all sides of the polygons then we can use this formula as discussed earlier to calculate the projection of each vertex on the normal then checking the overlap is just a matter of comparing the min and max points of the projections of each polygon and checking if there is a gap if we find one we can return false as the result of the collision detection if there is an overlap we can continue checking with other normals if we don't find a gap in projection of any of the normals we can say that we have a collision and that is all there is to it If we take a look at the formula we can see that the normalization and the cos theta are both only scalars and same for both the polygons so we can effectively remove them they are useful when we need to calculate the penetration of the collision but if we just want to know if there has been a collision they are not really required so we can skip them and speed up the calculations as we have just eliminated two operations for every vertex that we process Another optimization that we can do is uh, while dividing the concave polygons it is better to divide them into larger chunks than going for triangles the more polygons we have the harder the sat algorithm has to work to find a collision and with that i would like to conclude this video i hope you enjoyed it and understood how the sat algorithm works i'll be making a video about the asteroids game i am working on so subscribe if you would like to see that until then farewell